Welcome back to my channel. Uh, today we're going to do video one of a three-part series on hair. Part one is how to do a tapered stroke, and that's the type of stroke that you want to use for hair. Part two is going to be on highlighting and where to put highlights, and three is going to be on texture. So please ring your bell and we will begin. At the end of each video, I'll be giving you five new color palettes for hair color. Don't worry about copying them down. They will be available on my website for you to download. This is a photo that I found on Google under use and reuse. So I have the, I guess, the license to use it. Uh, it is a second city or a second life. Uh, drawing and it had no attribution of somebody who I could credit with it. I chose this picture because it's an excellent example of a tapered stroke. What a tapered stroke is is that you the way you do hold your pencil and the way you apply the wax to the paper has sort of a defined starting point and then an easing up of the line till you get to the point it takes a little bit of practice but within a day or two of practicing and I'm going to show you exactly how to do it and how not to do it um, you should be able to achieve realistic hair what I liked about this photo was the way the light was shining on it you could see it's very natural she obviously has um, been to the salon lately because her streaks are right on point. Um, so if you look down at the bottoms of her hair, and you can see it here, going down in here, it almost looks like individual strands or small groups of strands. And that's what you want to achieve when you're doing um, the tapered stroke. And note, I, what I liked about this also was the depth and the fullness in her hair. And she achieved this by the shading, whoever did this, by the shading. Um, this is obviously not a photo, but it's pretty close to photo real, uh, realistic. Um, and I'm going to show you how to do this. So let's go. Before we get to the coloring book, I'm going to show you how to do the tapered stroke. Here I have, it's a Verithin. It is not a Prisma Swift Core. The Verithin is by Prisma Color. They're worth buying a set. I don't have a full set where it matches each color, but I do have enough that I can demonstrate this. Do I use Verithins all the time? Most of the time, I will do at the very end some uh, realistic looking hair takes a lot of time. Probably the most time on a picture should be spent doing the individual hairs. But before you could do hair, you need to know the sh how to do the stroke. I'm gonna demonstrate Okay, I'm going to zoom in on it for you. See how this starts out thick and becomes thinner and lighter? Wispy. And I do this by applying more pressure and giving it, getting it light. Hard pressure. And then it, I lift off the page. It's sort of like a scooping motion. Just like that. Okay, each hair is deliberate. So, what you're not gonna wanna do is this. See how my pressure remains mostly the same? And it's not very controlled. It's really all over the place over here. What we want what I want you to do is practice. 
getting those wisps very controlled. Wherever you put the pencil should have it. It shouldn't be where you're not, you're just landing. Okay, so we want very controlled strokes. And that's how you're going to begin. Just practice those doing it. Now, when I really zoom in, what people are going to see sometimes at the beginning when you're doing it, I have to see if I can do it, you're going to get like a little ball and a line. And you can see the difference. We're not doing hair plugs. And that's what I call these, my little hair plugs. Also, you must have a sharp pencil. This does not work with dull pencils. It works better with harder wax. Um, this is a regular Prismacolor, and you can see it does work. The finding end is wispy and it's a little thicker. As I said, go down and up and up. Okay, we've moved on over to the book. Now, if I was working from my own design, these hairs that have already been drawn into it would not be there. The artist of the book, and this is Grazia Salvo. You can see that. flowers and gems. He had a very nice example in here. I've used this picture before to show examples, so that's why it's already colored a little bit. And I'm going to use the red palette that you're going to find at the end of this tutorial. I'm going to give you 10 palettes. Uh, you don't have to worry about copying it down or screenshotting it. It's already been put on the website with the pencils themselves. I'm still working on getting all the photos up there and all the pencils written, but for now I made sure that at least the hair ones are finished so they're ready for you to use. So here we have a beautiful girl. I had done the eyes in another video. And we're going to just look at her hair. Her hair is slightly wavy. I'm going to start with my medium color, and actually I'm going to start with a, a darker color. In this, my, in this palette, black raspberry is the darkest color. And I'm going to fill in with these whiskey lines the areas that I know are going to be shaded. Now of course, the way you decide to do your if you like to start with your lights first I'm just saying with this technique it's easier to start with the darks do not start with black never with black and what makes this book really easy is that he's already said where he wants the darker highlights to go and where the lighter highlights to go he incorporated that now you could see he used a taper line. All his lines are tapered. And that's why this was a good book to use because I'm just filling in on some of the tapered that he used. Now we're gonna get into how to put the highlights in next time. Right now I'm just demonstrating to you how a tapered line looks much more realistic. I'm just adding the darkest to the darker areas. See, if I was using, say, a very thin pen, pencil, here we have it. This is part of what I did earlier. 
I can add individual hairs and they won't blend in quite so readily. And you put a little there and a little there. You're going to still continue to layer like we always layer. And you can see where I'm having my tapered strokes. Okay. Now I'm going to get Use a little bit of the red, which will be the medium color, just to get some of the red into where the darker colors are. And if you notice, I'm going in two different directions. I start from the bottom up and the top down. This is important to be able to do your tapered strokes both ways and get them nice and whiskey. With the wax, it's a little bit harder to get a defined line, but you could still do it. See, if I was going to just color, I would have gone like this and just colored it in. Which sometimes I do when I want to get large blocks. But the correct way to get that nice wispy hair is with that tapered stroke. Down and up. After you practice it on paper for a while, you really tend to just go for it. You don't even think twice. You get your hand on hair and you know you use a tapered stroke to color it. So that's using one color. Now I want to add in a couple of other colors. I'm going to go back to using a harder wax. And I'm going to add individual hairs on the second layer. When we go through the shading lesson, I'm going to show you how to bring some of those hairs really out. As you can see, it's already starting to take shape. The trick to this is to keep working in layers. Once I have that first layer down, you're going to go back. Say I want some red highlights in this I did in a little browner color. I'm going to add my wisps in. Because when you look at the photo that I showed you earlier, they all have individual hairs. Now I want to get a little bit of the lightest color in there. And because I've been working down and up, it naturally forms a highlight right in the middle. That should blend right in. See? And now you have a red highlight. So I suggest you practice. And next video, we're going to show you how to completely do those highlights and how to pick the lighting and groups of highlights. And then the third one is going to be on how to do texture. And this is going to include straight, curly, and wavy hair. Mom, 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 is it my turn yet? My turn? Go for it. Yeah. Here is five of ten hair coloring palettes. Number ten, red hair. Number 
Number nine, light blonde hair with green highlights. Medium blonde hair. Number seven, dark purple hair. Light purple hair. Number six. If you like what you saw and you want to see more, hit that like and subscribe. And don't forget to ring that bell.